Today we are going to look at using some new software. In a moment I want you to open this site here, www.vector.com, but vector, V-E-C-T-R. Um, once you've opened that, you need to log on. I would suggest um, logging on with your Google accounts, your school Google accounts, then you don't have to juggle different passwords. Um, also, when you come to open this in school, you'll be able to access all the same files and things like that. So this is a nice free piece of software. If any of you used Adobe Illustrator before, um, which hopefully some of you have, it's a much simplified version of that. But we are, importantly, looking at this idea of vector-based graphics rather than raster graphics. So just briefly, vector-based graphics, well, let's start with raster-based graphics. They're the easy ones to understand. They just consist of lots and lots of different colored dots. Now, most, well, just about every photo we look at is a raster-based graphic. So that's a JPEG, a GIF, a PNG, a bitmap, all of those file types. Now, we can have very high resolution ones which have lots and lots of dots. And remember, we refer to that as the dots per inch, the DPI. Okay, now vector based graphics, these files here, these SVGs, these consist of mathematical lines between points. So that means we can scale these up and up and up and they won't do, they won't pixelate, they won't become blocky. Now at some point, if we're going to print it or put it on a screen or something like that, it needs to become a rasterized graphic, okay? But to start with, vector-based graphics are great because we can scale them up, we can manage them in different ways. The downside is we need slightly more complex software to do that. So log yourselves on and we should be in this. So I'm gonna put my face out of the way. Now the downside is you get the sort of free advertisements here. But let's just briefly go through the screen. Over here, you've got your different tools you're going to use. These are the um, different files you can create in here, pages. Um, you can create different layers here. Now, uh, this arrow here takes you back out to your profile. So that's not actually a select tool. So let's start with the very basics. I'm going to just quickly draw a cuboid. Okay, and you can see straight away over here, just like Illustrator, a slightly different layout, but I can control the fill color. Clicking on that, I can change it to images and things like that. I can control the border color. I need to turn the border weight on to do that as well. So if I come down here, I don't want shadow. The moment the border is set very thin. And this isn't going to work. Here we go, we're back in business. Um, so I can control the border just like you can in Illustrator. Now, you've got some obvious shapes here. Remembering um, ellipses, um, same as Illustrator and other pieces of software. If I hold the shift key down, that just locks the aspect ratio so it gets as wide as it does tall. And I can draw circles with that. Okay, so getting a bit more complex. Let's move those out of the way. Now, this is the key one. This is the one we really need to learn how to use the pen tool. So if you remember from Illustrator, I can go click and click and I can draw straight lines and I can carry on drawing straight lines indefinitely. Now I can either click on a different tool to get out of this or I can press the escape key on the keyboard. Okay, so that was drawing some straight lines. I'm gonna move this over here. Now I'm gonna click back on this tool now, just like Illustrator. I'm going to click, but this time I'm gonna click and drag. And when I click and I drag and I get what we call an anchor point, that's what I'm gonna call this bit here, and some handles here. And I can carry on clicking and dragging, clicking and dragging. If I want to, and there's absolutely no need to do this, I can make that into a complete shape. So I could give that a fill color in a moment. Now, what I need to do, the next stage I want you to get a hang of, is the difference between selecting and editing. Now there, on Illustrator, you have a black arrow and a white arrow, and that's your select and edit arrows. On this one, if I just leave it as it is, I'm just um, straightforward selecting. If I select something, I can change the, sh the size of it, but not necessarily the shape of it. It's quite nice, it gives you these sort of flip vertical um, options straight away. You don't have to go hunting for a menu for that. But I can't actually, if I've sort of made a mistake and go, actually, it wasn't quite the shape I was looking for, what I do is I double click on the shape and it brings me back to these anchor points here and 
I've got some, some control here with some handles here. Same here, so I can select it, I can move it around, and I'm gonna double click on it. And when I click on here, I'm back to controlling the handles. There we go. So I can control the line around here, back to handles. We can also quite easily as well, there's no add anchor point tool, there's no remove anchor point tool. So wherever you click on this line, it will just assume you want to add more anchor points. My internet's just being a bit slow at the moment, so mine's taking a while to catch up. Uh, too many other people doing things in the house. So what I want you to do to start with, because um, I don't want to make massively long videos, just get the hang of using these tools. So the square tool, the ellipse tool, the pen tool to draw straight lines, the pen tool to draw curved lines, and then either selecting by clicking on it or editing by double clicking on it. You should understand how to control the background color, the border color and the border width. Uh, you can also have a go with these shadow functions here. Okay, thank you very much guys. I'll put the link to the website in the comments as well.